Hey guys, welcome to another episode of La Historia, where I delve into the fascinating stories behind the world's most intriguing events, personas, and phenomena. Today, we're exploring the captivating journey of Esperanto, a language born out of one man's dream of fostering global harmony for communication. Join me as we uncover the rich history, challenges, and enduring legacy of Esperanto. Now, 135 years later, Europe is again riven by violence and tension, most notably by the war between Russia and Ukraine, which is at least partially driven by political debate about language differences. Unfortunately, conflicts over language are common around the world. But amidst these tensions, a beacon of hope emerged. Our story begins in Poland, where a visionary named Zamenhof embarked on a remarkable quest. Zamenhof dreamt of a world where people could communicate easily and peacefully, transcending language barriers that often divide us. He dedicated years to crafting a language designed not to replace anyone's native tongue, but to serve as a universal second language. He believed Esperanto could be the key to fostering understanding and cooperation among people of different backgrounds. Samenhaus' vision was clear. Esperanto was to be the property of society, a tool for unity rather than ownership. Despite facing challenges and opposition, he remained steadfast in his belief in the power of language to bridge divides. Between 1907 and 1917, Zamenhof's efforts were recognized with 14 Nobel Peace Prize nominations, though he never received the award. Nevertheless, his legacy endured, shaping the course of linguistic history. Esperanto's foundation drew from the vocabulary of eight languages, including English, French, German, Greek, Italian, Latin, Polish, Russian, and Yiddish. This linguistic blend contributed to Esperanto's accessibility and ease of learning. In 1905, Esperanto speakers worldwide began gathering annually for the World Esperanto Congress, fostering a vibrant community united by a shared passion for the language. Esperanto's reputation extended beyond linguistic circles with proposal for its adoption in international diplomacy. Early 20th century was the best time for it to become the universal language. French was in decline, English not yet completely ascendant, and the delegates of the League of Nations believed that Esperanto could fill the vacuum. Studying in schools and telegraph offices and spreading inexorably as both the medium and the message of international cooperation and world peace. However, such initiatives face resistance, notably from the French delegate at the League of Nations, who vetoed the proposal fearing a loss of prestige for the French language. Despite its noble aspirations, Esperanto encountered adversity during some of history's darkest moments. From accusations of communism to persecution under totalitarian regimes, Esperanto and its proponents faced significant challenges. According to Hitler, Esperanto was evidence of a Jewish plot to take over the world, since its inventor, Zamenhof, was Jewish. During the Third Reich, the Gestapo received specific orders to search for the descendants of Zamenhof. All three of his children died in the Holocaust, as did many Esperanto speakers. Ironically, life behind the Iron Curtain wasn't much easier for Esperanto speakers. In the Soviet Union, Esperantists were alleged to be a part of international espionage organization, Many were persecuted and later perished during Stalin's Great Purge. Yet, amid adversity, Esperanto persevered. In 1954, UNESCO recognized the Universal Esperanto Association, paving the way for its representation in international forums and events. Today, Esperanto continues to thrive, 
with enthusiasts around the world and a wealth of resources available online. Its presence spans from the halls of academia to the icy expanse of Antarctica with as many as two million speakers, embodying Zamenhof's enduring vision of hope and unity. Thanks to the internet, learning Esperanto has never been easier. There is now a wide array of free Esperanto resources online, including Duolingo, the complete illustrated dictionary of Esperanto, and even Google Translate. More than just the language, Esperanto represents the enduring human aspiration for understanding and global harmony. As Zamenhof once pondered, could a neutral language like Esperanto help bridge our device and pave the way for a more peaceful world? That concludes our journey in the story of Esperanto, a testament to the power of language to shape our world. Join me next time as we uncover more legacies that have left an indelible mark on history. Until then, remember, in Esperanto, the word Esperanto means one who hopes.